on the map, they're neighbours, but there's nothing neighbourly about relations between Iran and the nations of the GCC. The Gulf Cooperation Council speaking of meddling, interference and violation from Iran as unrest mounts across the region. But why speak now? And where is this sort of rhetoric taking them? Iran, the GCC and the Gulf between them. This is Inside Story. Hello there, I'm Kamal Santa Maria. There are fresh tensions in the Gulf these days, but you'd have to characterize them as internal ones this time. Because the country being painted as the aggressor is, at the most, just 300 kilometers across that famous stretch of water. It's essentially the nations of the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC, against Iran. The foreign ministers of those six nations, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, they all met in Riyadh recently and didn't hold back in the statement they released. They criticized what they called Iran's blatant interference in internal affairs, particularly in Bahrain and in Kuwait. That comes after Iran's objection to Saudi Arabia sending in troops to Bahrain during the uprising there. In return, the Iranian president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, said on Monday the GCC statement was issued under the pressure of the United States government and its allies. So what we're going to talk about today is exactly what this apparent Iranian meddling might or might not amount to, and just what the GCC and indeed Iran are actually achieving by ratcheting up the rhetoric at this very sensitive time in the region. To do all that, we've got guests from right across the region. Here they are. In Jeddah, in Saudi Arabia, is Hussein Shabukshi. He is a columnist for al Shok al-Assad uh, newspaper. In the Iranian capital, Tehran, is political commentator and journalist Ramba Nadri. And rounding out the panel in Kuwait City, security analyst Fahad Shulemi, who was also a former colonel in the Kuwaiti army, later security advisor to the Kuwaiti prime minister's office. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Inside Story. I want to do a little bit of background first because I think we need to explain to our viewers exactly why Iran might be meddling or might not meddling and what it's got to gain, what its interests are in the Gulf. And I'm going to do that with Hussein uh, Shabokshi in Jeddah. What's your take? Maybe you can just explain for the viewers the sorts of divisions that exist. Well, the history speaks for itself, really. The, the, since the Iranian revolution took place, there's been a lot of signs of this meddling of affairs in the region, particularly the Saudis have suffered at first hand, be it during the Hajj demonstrations that were conducted for a couple of years in a row and caused the deaths of so many, and then obviously the big fiasco that took place with the Iranian involvement in the Al Khobar bombing uh, in the late 1990s in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Saudis have also been suffering from these uh, interventions by the Iranian military or intelligence in uh, their southern border uh, through aiding the Houthis in their uh, rebellious attempt to overthrow the Yemeni government and infiltrating the Saudi borders. Uh, furthermore, obviously, the intervention by the Iranians in Kuwaiti, Bahraini politics, to say the least, and this is annoying, obviously, to the Saudis. And uh, the last but not the least is the, uh, Iran, uh, the Iraqi uh, affairs. I mean, the Iraqi affairs have been completely uh, overrun by the Iranian intervention, be it direct or indirect. Uh, there's a lot of Iranian personnel on the ground in Iraq, and uh, Iraqis do visit Iran on a regular basis to conduct uh, secret meetings uh, that we later on uh, hear of policies and changes in policies uh, that uh, meet exactly the demands of the Iranian uh, rule. Okay, so let's hear the opposite side of the opposite side of the argument, if I can say that, with Khan Benadri in Tehran. What Hussein Shabokshi was almost saying there is there is a history of conflict. This goes back a long time. It's not the type of thing which we can define as any one event now. It's a, a, a build-up of events over the years. What do you say? Well, uh, first of all, f as for Iraq, remember, even the American officials acknowledge the undisputable fact that it was because of Iran and its, uh, 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 its, ha its uh, kind of dialogue that it arranged between the different disputing parties in Iraq that the civil war ended a couple of years ago, three years ago, if I'm not wrong. So it was Iran that stopped the bloodshed between the different factions, the disputing factions. So Iran played a positive role in that particular country. There is no, there is no argument about that and even the American officials acknowledge. As for Saudi Arabia, the, the way that they killed so many Iranian pilgrims there, I mean, I, I don't know why they are taking proud. They, they, are, they, they think that they have made a 
big deal out of it. They are making a big deal out of it as if they have done something. Iran Iranians were just saying death to America. They were not saying anything about Saudi Arabia. And it was a peaceful rally in support of the Palestinians, and they were all crushed. So many people got killed. So I think, please, don't, don't bring up these two historic facts, because there is no dispute about it that Iran did not play any part in it. It was uh, an initiative taken by the pilgrims themselves, not Iranian government. Okay. And the, uh, the problem with Saudi Arabia and other countries in the Middle East is that they have become extremely paranoid. They think that Iran is playing a part in these rallies and demonstrations that are taking place right now in every corner of the Middle East, North Africa, and Persian Gulf. No, it has nothing to do with Iran. Iran has no say in these uh, uh, uprisings because these uprisings have been uh, have been initiated by the people themselves, and people want one thing. They want to decide and uh, make up their own destiny, and they are not listening to anybody, including okay. Iran. And we're going to get more into that a little bit later on the Iranian view on that. I'll bring in uh, Fahad Shlemi in uh, Kuwait City. If we bring it forward to that, we've got a lot of history there from the two guests previously. Right now, is it just paranoia that's fueling this? I mean, the, the, the words from the GCC interested me. Flagrant interference, continuing meddling, violating the sovereignty. They have not held back at all in this statement. Uh, thank you for um, the interview. I just uh, want to thank, uh, wanna thank uh, the two colleagues who was uh, in, uh, in the discussion. Uh, I, I think as a, a GCC citizen, uh, I'll, 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 uh, I don't want to go to history. Uh, I will go to a recent uh, issues. Mm. In Kuwait, we have a problem. We have a problem with Iran. Uh, it's not only a military problem. We have a drugs trafficking problem. We have a border dispute, which is a sea border dispute problem over an oil field. We have uh, an espionage uh, problem recently. Uh, in fact, we did not talk about espionage until there was a court order. And uh, in Kuwait, we are proud of our uh, judiciary uh, system and, 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 and the court orders. Uh, also, what is make us a little bit worry and, and fear from that is the non-transparency on Iranian nuclear program. Every time there is a denouncing, every time there is a, a, a vague uh, picture. Now, w when we complain to Iran, about, about the espionage, about the intervention in our uh, local affairs. We got the word, the denial, denial, denial. So the, I, I think the Iranian brother, brothers still denying their involvement in Yemen, still denying their involvement in Iraq, still denying their involvement in Bahrain, still denying their involvement in Kuwait, and, and, and maybe in future they will still denying their involvement in Somalia. Uh, the main issue is, and I think I could find an excuse for that uh, denial, that is Ira Iran is a dragon with two heads. One is the Revolutionary Guard, the other one is the executive branch. So there is no control over one of these two heads. How we solve it, I think uh, it, 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 it goes firstly to the to the Iranian brothers, to the Iranian partners uh, over, over the other side of, of, of the Gulf. Transparency, uh, more uh, confidence building, but I think with the espionage problem, uh, it was a, a big blow for our efforts. And, and, and also the last thing I wanna, I wanna mention is, in this administration, Ahmadinejad administration, the relationship, the, the GCC and Iranian relationship has shaken uh, many times. Uh, uh, the opposite was happening during uh, President Khatimi. There was more cooperation, there was a, a water agreement, there was a gas agreement, but when, when Ahmadinejad uh, took power with his administration, I think thing, uh, things started to be worsen. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, lately, we, we end with an espionage uh, in, in Kuwait. OK, so let me tell you what I'm getting from all of you here, gentlemen, is that there is a lot of history there. There is a lot of uh, perception issues, if you like. Everyone views things in different ways. I want to, if you don't mind, move it forward to what's been happening most recently. And of course, that was when we saw a decision by the GCC to send in what's known as the Peninsula Shield troops, essentially, into Bahrain when there was an uprising there. And as we heard earlier as well, Iran's president was quick to dismiss the statement made by the Gulf countries. Uh, and he made direct reference to the situation in Bahrain. This is what he had to say. Uh, it is hideous that troops have been brought in. Take them out. The people have demands, so listen to them. He then went on to say the Saudis did an ugly thing to deploy troops. The Bahraini government also did an ugly work to kill its own people. 
Ramban Nadri in Tehran, why did he react? He, President Ahmadinejad, react so strongly along those lines? Because if he's talking about uh, the people have demands to so listen to them, that's equally something that could have been applied to President Ahmadinejad a couple of years ago during the elections. Very good, very good argument. Remember, we had a, a dispute over the results of the presidential race that took place a couple of years ago. That was it. People didn't want regime change. They wanted to to have their votes counted, and and they said if there are some vote rigging, you know, involved, they want the whole thing scrapped completely and another round of elections uh, to, to to be organized. That's exactly what they want. They didn't want the regime change. Quite the opposite. People uh, in the Middle East and North Africa want regime change. What what uh, is this too much to ask? I'm asking you this simple question. Iran is simply asking the regional states and the government and the people. Not to, be, not to become the poodle of the United States and its allies. But, Iran but, wants them to decide and decide their own destiny, make their own decisions. That's all Iran is asking them. But this because decision, America is it, only creating problems. Forgive me interrupting. This decision to send troops in the Peninsula Shield, as I said, this was a request. It came, it was delivered by the GCC. It wasn't, as far yes, as it, I can it, see, any yes, external it, it influence. Was. That, that, that's a good argument. Yes, the, the counter argument here is that that agreement only uh, uh, is applicable when another country invades a, 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 a member state. Here we are talking about people. Arabistan, Saudi Arabia has sent troops there to, to crush the popular uprising. They are not there to defend Bahrain against an invading army or a regime. No, they are there to crush people, and that's, that's totally unacceptable. Iran says that, yes, I respect your regional agreements and accords uh, and the deals, but this has nothing to do with that. You are there because you are, you are paranoid and you are afraid that the next target is going to be you, the next, des the next destination is going to be you. That's why you are there. You want to make sure that the, the the wave of popular uprising is not going to reach your shores. OK, let's hear what Mr Hussein Shabokshi has to say about that in Jeddah, seeing as that's where the troops came from, at least Saudi Arabia, they came across into Bahrain. Did the Iranian president have a, have a, have a fair grievance about the nature in which those troops went in? Absolutely not, but that's again typical of Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad uh, wants uh, to create havoc. Simply, this was a sovereign decision by a sovereign state, a member of a sovereign organization, inviting troops to assist that state in order to establish uh, stability and security for its people and its borders. Simply, these issues are an internal set of issues determined by that government, which is a sovereign government still. And the intervention, the vulgar intervention by Ahmadinejad in Bahraini's affairs something that has been established by the Bahraini government itself in exposing the names and the people who were trained by Hezbollah in Lebanon, which we all know is a proxy of the Iranian government, interfering directly in the uh, affairs of the security of Bahrain, exposes who's really creating havoc and who's really interventing and trying to change the rules of the game on the ground. It falls into the same uh, rules that have existed with the Iran when they occupied the Emirati islands or when they intervened, intervened in Iraqi politics or Kuwaiti affairs. The precedents are so many to speak for. And I just want to comment about the Hajj incident. There just were over quickly, 25 Saudi, yeah, Saudi uh, security forces that were killed, and that uh, citizens of uh, Iran that were in the Hajj were all part of an official government delegation. So you make your own conclusion. Uh, Fahud Shlaimi, let's go to you in Kuwait City. There's something which none of you have actually mentioned yet, and that is the sectarian divide, the Shia Sunni sectarian divide. How does this play into what is going on with this unrest, if you like, between Iran and the GCC? Kamal, uh, first of all, I am I'm a supporter of freedom of speech and freedom of gathering and peaceful gathering. What is hap what, what was happening in Bahrain was was uh, was a mix of a peaceful gathering, an ideology, and a mismanagement from the government and uh, a misbehavior from the crowds. So, if you add all these ingredients together, you will have a chaos. You will have. Uh, unrest, you will have uh, 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 low problems. 
So uh, that is one. The second one, I was officer in Kuwait Army for 25 years. And part of our exercise and part of our military exercise is the airlift to a country from a country to a country, or maneuver military exercise in Bahrain or in Saudi Arabia or in Oman or in Qatar. So traffic movement for, for, for GCC forces is something not normal. It's, it's, it's a normal thing. Uh, it's not strange. It is a thing that we have been trained uh, on. Uh, the call of the GCC, it was part of the mandate uh, of, G of uh, uh, GCC charter, uh, mm -hmm. which is, I think, um, uh, article number two. That is, if any country asked or felt in danger or threatened, he has the right to call uh, right. the GCC, the Peninsula and Shield. So uh, technically, uh, Bahrain is, is on the safe side from this side. Um, uh, the, the other issue. The sectarian is, uh, issue, yeah. Yeah, the sectarian issue. There is no doubt that is, um, uh, the Shia majority has, uh, uh, has been treated as a second class citizen, and this is fact of life. I, th I think uh, bringing uh, the teams together or bringing the group together between the, the, the ruling family and and other parties with, with the Shia on one table uh, to do the political settlement is the best thing. Now, it's something strange happened uh, d during that uh, strikes. It happens that all grocery stores or most of the grocery stores has been managed by an Iranian nationalities. Uh, they were on strike also. And that has raised uh, some questions, Mark, about the role of, 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 of of people from, from Iran. I don't want to generalize, but mm. I think that was a coordinated issues. When, when, when you have all uh, food stores, all grocery stores comes in, in, in strike at one day at a certain time, uh, coordinated uh, mm -hmm. uh, actions. Okay. So Let's mainly, 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 mainly the best thing to, to, to Bahraini is sitting on the table of negotiations. Peninsula Shield was part of like uh, more uh, uh, more power or strength to push up the two parties to sit on the negotiation table. Okay. I, I didn't expect we'd start talking about grocery stores in this discussion, but there you go. Uh, Ramba Nadri, quick reply from you before I want to move on to another topic. <laughs> well, when you're talking about a strike, yes, that's a different story. But here you've got some Iranian nationals, expatriates, who have invested in places such as Qatar, Dubai, mm -hmm. Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, and Bahrain. So, I mean, you put yourself in their shoes. You have spent all your life and you have invested everything that you have had uh, made until now what you're going to do you're going to close your shop down because you don't have any other choice what's going what's going to happen people will, will ransack it it's going to be burned down because people will think that you are supporting the government so what you do you just side with the prost protesters and you just close down and you go home have some rest this is this has nothing to do with iran i mean i, I would be surprised i mean if iran had some kind of say in these things because this is totally business it has nothing to do with demonstrations no, good point to make, and I did want to talk about the Iranian diaspora, but you've brought it up there yourselves. Let's just pause for a moment and look elsewhere around the uh, GCC, because I think there is an interesting player to consider in anything GCC-related at the moment, and that is the group's new secretary-general. And when we say new, I'm talking less than a week into the job here. He is Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, seen here on the left. Uh, Bahraini himself, crucially though, he is the first former military man to head up the GCC since it was formed back in 1981. Once a Lieutenant General in the Bahrain Defence Force, he went on to work for the Ministry of the Interior as Chief of Public Security, which basically means he was in charge of all security departments, had influence from police through to the Special Forces. Hussein Shabukshi in Jeddah, if I can come to you to talk about uh, the Secretary General of the GCC. I mean, it's perhaps a, a coincidence in timing that he is now taking over at the moment, but do you think with having a former military man in charge, it would signal a, a harder line from the GCC or the GCC wanting to flex its muscles a bit more? I don't think uh, we should read a lot into that particular uh, point. However, I think the GCC members are definitely feeling the threat and they're feeling the heat uh, from Iran. And there is a solidified argument to be made now in their positions about uh, joint military exercises, voicing concerns more publicly, louder uh, statements. Uh, there is going to be a lot of cooperation in security and military affairs. I have no doubt about that. 
because the Bahraini chapter uh, tells us, you know, particularly after the, Ira the UAE chapter of the Iranians occupying these islands in, uh, in the Emirates, tells us that uh, the appetite, the Iranian appetite to exercise more visible threats to the GCC country is no longer a secret and it's a fact of life. Diplomacy is going to take a back seat and definitely security is going to be the soup de jour vis-a-vis uh, uh, vis -vis the relationship between Iran and the GCC countries. Okay, so Mr. Hussein saying there that Iran is certainly picking things up on its side. Uh, Fahad Shlaimi in Kuwait City, does that mean do you think the GCC will react in a certain way? I can't see the GCC, you know, taking any action against Iran. It's using a lot of words at the moment, but I mean, past that, what's it going to do? Uh, just, just a few comments. That is about Mr. Zayani. I met him two times when, when I was and when he was in the surface. Mm. Uh, and we were in United Arab Emirates. He's a good man. He has a PhD holder. He's a well-educated. His name was on the table a year ago, not because of this incident had 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 took place. Um, uh, I, I, I think I think there will be some security measures and an agreement uh, should be uh, uh, done and uh, between us and uh, the Iranians. Uh, we uh, there is a lesson learned. Uh, in Kuwait mainly, uh, we learned it, and um, I'll, I'll give you an, uh, an example uh, how uh, deep uh, this espionage uh, or this spy cell uh, uh, affected uh, the Kuwaiti relations. Uh, my friend in Tehran, he mentioned we, 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 we are we living in a, a, a panoroya or, or we live in uh, uh, our, our fears is not that uh, facto. Uh, the intelligence requirement that is, has been asked from the espionage or the spy cell, it was mainly small tactical information and operational information and strategic information. It's not only about the American forces. It's mainly directed about the Kuwaiti army, the, the armed forces, the battalions, the brigades. That shows how intelligence demands, the Iranian intelligence demand, we're looking for. And that's why we, we fear that. Now, we, there is a lesson learned, needs to be learned from. Uh, I, th I think our relationship needs to be evaluated with the Iranians' uh, f uh, neighbors. Uh, I think the words that is, uh, we are a follower to America, it's not the first time. It, it has been mm. used on 50s from radical republics, Arab radical republics during the nationalists. It has been used in 60s. It has been used in 70s during Gaddafi. It has been used in, now in Iran since 80s. So this is an old song. It has been uh, uh, singed by any regime have a problem with the United okay, States. Okay, so you're saying, uh, the, forgive me the, interrupting, because uh, we are starting to run down. The we have, we, we're starting yes. to run down the clock, so I'm going to jump in. I'm sorry, but you're saying evaluate the relationship. Uh, I think we should evaluate the relationship. Right, we so let's, have hear a what, let's hear what Khamba Nadri uh, has to say about that. With, with, with all due respect, let's say you, you, both of your incumbent guests are right, that Iran is a liar, Iran wants to interfere in the, inter in the internal affairs of the GCC states, Iran is not a security, is not a is stabilizing fact, force uh, in the region. Let's, let, let, let's say these are all facts. Let's say everything that you say is right. And I'm not going to argue about that. Let's say you are right. But I'm asking you this simple question. Do you think that all these people who are on the streets in different capitals of the region and North Africa are also lying? Do you think that the, these people are not making legitimate demands? Iran has said the same thing. Iran says stop being pro-Israel. Stop being pro-America. Stop being pro-West. Come to your senses. De make your own decisions. Let us sit together and talk and solve our security problems. Yes, you, you, you are right. Our border disputes. Let's let's de resolve all those things. But without American meddling, and so far, unfortunately, the, the GCC states they never bother to ask and invite Iran in their security meetings. They don't do that because they look at Iran as a, as an enemy. Mm -hmm. But they cannot change the fact that Iran is their neighbors. And as neighbors, we have a duty. We have every responsibility to make sure. 
sure that we have we sort out our differences through dialogue now you are saying that we want to you know sever our relations with Iran reconsider our relations with Iran Le don't forget that Iran with Kuwait and Qatar has uh, signed security agreements so w w what does it mean you want to scrap those agreements also no you, what, what you're doing everything all these things are going to a security are pointing agreement to one has been fact signed only. because of this the is drug going trafficking Okay, gentlemen, I'm going to okay, jump okay. in myself that, that's because. Good. But, I'm, let's, I'm but let's just 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 one this simple point. Uh, these seconds. things are not going to serve your national interest. This is going to serve the national interest of the United States, Israel, and their allies. Not Kuwait, not Bahrain, not Iran, not Saudi Arabia. All right, gentlemen, I wish we had more time, but we don't. I've got to wrap the show up now. But thank you so much for joining us uh, for Inside Story. We had Hussein Shabokshi in Jeddah. Uh, Ramban Adri in Tehran and Fahad Shlaimi in Kuwait City. Great discussion. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to our viewers as well. And send us your comments and suggestions, won't you? Inside Story at AlJazeera.net is our email address. From the whole team, goodbye for now.